managerial uh, incompetence and derailment uh, in this session, uh, we will talk about uh, uh, what is the managerial incompetence. Uh, we have talked about the managerial competence uh, and that is uh, about the A into M into O, I will discuss it uh, later also. Then the managerial derailment, uh, situational and follower factors, uh, lack of organizational fit, uh, lack of situational and self awareness, uh, lack of intelligence or skills, uh, poor fellowship uh, and the dark side personality traits are there. Uh, then we will talk about this uh, as usual the research papers, case study, book recommendations and the references are there. Uh, so, first we have to understand what is the managerial uh, competence is there. Huh? So, therefore, a manager's uh, competency uh, we will talk about the formula is A into M into O. A is the ability. So, what type of the ability is there? That is the technical skills, HR skills, conceptual skills, analytical skills and designing skills that is the creativity. So, whenever we are talking about the competency of the manager, then this is the ability of the manager is there. M is for motivation and O is for the opportunity. So, uh, when the person is enable, inability of the person, right. So, therefore, in that case, he is not having like to build the teams or get result for a leader, what is important? That is the HR skills are important. But he is not able to be in inability to build the teams. So, HR skills are lacking. If HR skills are lacking, right, so then we will say it is a person is not competent. Position of authority can build teams, but not get results, right. So, therefore, you create the team, but this will not be the team, this will be the group. So, whenever we are talking about uh, uh, the groups. So, groups are like this and anyway we are talking about the team. Teams are like this. So, they are connected, integrated, but when you are building in a position, you are in a position, so you create the and say that this is my team, but team is not working, team is not working with coordination of each other, then this will be only group, but when they are working in a team, but they, when they will be the incompetent team manager, what will be the result and not the team, right. So, therefore, in that case, the managerial incompetency is the inability to build a team, but not getting the results. Getting the results, but destroy team moral and cohesiveness is there and neither the build teams not get the results. So, all three types of the uh, managers you will get, right. So, incompetent managers have difficulties building loyal following, uh, right or the getting anything done. Research shows that the, there may be more incompetent than the competent managers, right. So, therefore, there will be more like in the previous uh, session we have seen that is 8 percent only. So, therefore, 8 percent were the excellent while the rest were not excellent. The base rate of managerial incompetence may be 50 to 75 percent. So, therefore, it has been seen that is the managerial competence you know it is not that common, right the percentage is very low. So, competent managers are good at the building teams and getting results right uh, through others. Although they are the types of leaders most people aspire to be most people in position of the authority fall into one of the other three categories are there. Hmm? So, the event we have they, they are building the team right and getting the results competent managers. They are the getting the results, but does not build the teams taskmasters. They does not build the team, but does not get the result also 
right. So, they are the just figureheads and those does not get the results, but the building the teams they are cheerleaders are there. So, taskmasters are often good at the achieving the results hmm? such as financial targets or win loss records, but tend to treat followers so poorly that these results are generally short lived. Very good point has been mentioned. That is many times you know people believe that is if they are autocratic they get the results, but they forget that this practice will not continue for long. This practice very shortly it will die, right. So, therefore, in that case uh, here this taskmaster's uh, leadership style does not work uh, always or for the long time uh, basically, especially. So, cheerleaders are the people in position of authority who are people centered and make a point of getting along with everyone. Thanks to their focus on making the workplace warm and fun, most people like working for the cheerleaders are there. Figureheads do not play to win, they play to not lose. They may not be complete failures at building the teams and getting the results, but they could be a lot better at both of these endeavors. Many times figureheads do just enough to stay out of the trouble and avoid the spotlight. So, therefore, in that case uh, and they, they actually they are not uh, handling the tough situations. So, what happens managerial derailment happens the term management derailment refers to the failure of individuals who hold executive level positions within a company. Many people mistakenly assume that executives do not experience a similar job or career turmoil to lower level employees, but they do. Failure at the executive level is actually a relatively common occurrence. Management derailment can occur because of either personal failure or the external conditions are there. Managerial derailment describes the common reasons why people in position of authority have difficulties building teams or getting results through the others are there. So, the, the major reason, major reason for the derailment, first thing is that those who are at the top positions, uh, do they have the derailment? Yes, they have the derailment is there. So, it is not like this that is only the lower level uh, uh, executives will have the um, derailment and the uh, uh, executive level, uh, high level executive level which do not have this uh, uh, the derailment. It is a relatively common occurrence is there, they are also having the derailment is there. So, it does not mean that is if somebody is at very high position in the organization, it means he will not have the derailment, he will also have the derailment is there right and rather than it is very common. So, um, but point is this that is the when you are creating the team and, the, and building the teams are getting then you are supposed to get the result through others are there. Initial research on managerial development whereby the individuals who at one time were on the fast track only to have their careers derailed hmm, was conducted in the year early 90s by researchers at the center of creative leadership is there right. So, therefore, in that case uh, and this is the example is given in the 1980s by researchers, so it, uh, research has been done um, at the center for creative leadership right and the researchers went to the human resource departments in a number of fortune 100 companies seeking list of their uh, high potential managers. McCall and the Lombardo defined high potentials as individual who had been identified as eventually becoming either the CEO or the president or one of his or her direct reports and something in the future, sometime in the future. They waited for 3 years and then returned to these organizations to ask what had happened to the people on the list. So, after 3 years these researchers again they went and they discovered that roughly a quarter of the high potential had been promoted to one of the top two levels in the organization and an equal percentage has not yet been promoted, but would be as soon as the position became available, right. Another 25 percent had left the companies, some had quit to form their own companies and others were given better offers somewhere else. Finally, about a quarter of the people on the list were no longer being considered for promotion, most of these individuals were let go or demoted to less influential and visible positions are there. So, the last group of this, uh, this one quarter that has represented the managerial derailment means those who were having the potential, they could have performed, but they could not and therefore, in that case that is uh, first quarter was promoted right and the equal number has been given a position. 
uh, which will be given to them uh, in a short period of time and the but 25 percent has left and 25 percent were the managerial development. But I think that uh, uh, this percentage uh, uh, which is the 25 percent only, so then that is not the uh, very big number as such because the managerial development uh, causes uh, at a high percentage many times. So, what is the cause of the managerial derailment? Situational and follower factors, uh, the, that is very, very important. Situational factors and follower factors. Lack of organization fit, right. So, they have the potential, but they are not fit into the organization culture. Lack of situational and the self awareness, uh, many times they are not aware about uh, themselves uh, to do this job, or they are competent or not, right, and then they are performing lack of intelligence or skills to perform that particular uh, um, high level of promotion uh, level positions, poor fellowship is there, so they are not able to do that and dark side personality traits are there. So, therefore, in that case uh, um, these are the reasons by which uh, the managerial development is there. Situational and follow factors significantly affect a person's ability to build the teams and get results. Huh? So, therefore, in that case it is the uh, uh, they, they are having this ability to build the team and uh, getting the results. Uh, some of the situational factors uh, that can interfere with a person's ability to be seen as a competent manager. Hmm? So, therefore, uh, it, it, it is the situational and follower factors uh, they, they are uh, normally the uh, creating um, that is about the person's abilities uh, uh, whether the up or the down. New competitive threats, globalization, technology, changing customer preferences, unreliable suppliers, uh, new governments or the government regulations, uh, unfavorable media coverage and the natural disaster and wars are there. And therefore, uh, we will find that is the uh, it, it, it is becoming the um, government regulations uh, or the unfavorable media coverages are there and uh, as a result of which uh, uh, the, these are the uh, certain uh, factors. right? and uh, the person is tested. For example, the role of technology, change of technology, right? And the uh, if there are the unfavorable media coverage is there, that also creates uh, derailment and natural disasters and wars are there. Uh, the other factors are the mergers, mergers by the organizations, acquisitions by the organizations, diversity tutors, uh, bankruptcies, new strategies, uh, re reorganizations, major change initiatives, incidents of workplace violence or the environmental disasters. So, these are the reasons for the derailment. New bosses, peer, uh, this is also many times the new boss, right, that becomes the cause of the derailment. Peers, uh, direct reports, disengaged are the disgruntled employees, uh, disruptive worker clicks and the strikes are the dysfunctional turnover is there. New job responsibilities are the projects are there. A second point concerns the concept of the episodic incompetence versus the chronic competence is there, right. So, therefore, when we talk about these uh, new bosses, PR, direct reports, disengaged or dis uh, disgruntled employees are there, disruptive worker clicks in, and the strikes are dysfunctional turnover is there, right. So, th these all become the examples for the epi um, episodic competence versus the chronic competence is there. So, what is the episodic managerial uh, incompetence? When people in positions of the authority face extremely tough situational or follower events that temporarily interfere with their ability to build teams and get results, once they have reflected upon and taken action to cope with the event, they quickly regain their ability to successfully build teams and get results is there. So, if this type of these situations arises and then the how the person is responding to those situations and we can understand if the person that uh, he is taking action to cope with the event, he is able to cope with the event, then definitely in that case they quickly regain their ability. Hmm. But when, uh, when the taxing situational or follower events permanently disrupt a person's ability to build teams or get results, uh, given their preferred ways of the dealing with the challenging events, uh, cheerleaders, taskmasters and figureheads seem to exemplify chronic managerial incompetence is there. But if uh, uh, this type of the situation arises and they are not able to handle this type of situations, then there will be the managerial incompetence, very good point is there. 
many times it is a lack of organization fit or organizations have cultures but the content and strength of the beliefs uh, underlying these cultures can vary dramatically organizational culture is not one of those uh, uh, pervasive situational factors uh, that do manages to fail hmm? So, uh, but a person's fit within organization's culture, it is not like that, that is the organization's culture is not good, but it, it is the fitness between the uh, individual and the organization. So, that is why it has been mentioned that it is not the organization culture one of those pervasive situational factors, right, but a person's fit with the organization culture that can cause him or her to be seen as an incompetent because he is not able to adopt that particular culture. Organizational fit can be defined as the degree of agreement between personal and organizational values and beliefs. If a person does not share the values or beliefs of the majority of members, uh, then in all likelihood the, this person will be a poor fit with the organization is there. So, therefore, in that case uh, if uh, there is a difference also hmm, between the personal values and organizational values are there then definitely in that case does not share the values uh, then uh, it is likelihood that he has any the poor fit with the organization. Organizations often realize that continuing to do things the same way will eventually result in failure and one approach to fostering new ways of the thinking is to hire people from the outside with different work experiences there. New hires may have good ideas to remedy a situation, but whether they and their ideas are accepted will depend to a large extent on an organization's culture is there and therefore, in that case uh, the ideas uh, which are the accepted uh, that, that will create uh, uh, the uh, influence on the organization's culture. The further these ideas stray from the organization's prevailing values and beliefs the more likely they are to be dismissed is there right. So, therefore, in that case uh, they, they are required uh, that is the to develop uh, uh, when companies uh, hire new CEOs or they acquire other organizations specially then they develop that particular style of the values and beliefs are there. So, determining an organization's culture may not be the straightforward. However, because the underlying beliefs, norms, stories, and values are often unwritten. So, many times what happens? No, that is a new leader, he is not able to understand the culture because he is seeing superficially, but that is not the right uh, thing. Rather than that is about these uh, those who fit, do not fit run the risk of being seen as an incompetent and may find that working elsewhere can help them be seen as the competent managers are there. So, therefore, in that case uh, it is also possible uh, that he is the, the same person, he may be more successful in the another organization because that organization culture fit, but he may not be the successful in the X organization right. So, cultures it is a strategy for the breakfast is there right. So, therefore, uh, uh, it becomes very very important it is what type of these uh, uh, strategies are there and then uh, how uh, this cul culture is creating the person's fit is there. Now, here the it has been given very interesting figure uh, picture has been given that is how the culture, culture is with the change what type of the changes are occurring, innovations organization is adopting, execution the way the organization executes, the performance how it is performing and, and the growth is there. Right. So, on basis of these uh, five dimensions the culture will be decided. Competent managers must accurately read the situational and follower factors affecting their teams and remain vigilant for changes. Competent managers not only have the high level of situational awareness, they also have high levels of self awareness is there. Right. So, therefore, individuals who are keenly aware of their own strengths and shortcomings always if you are know yourself this is very very important when you know yourself then only in that case uh, uh, your competency when you know your competency so that high levels of the self awareness will be there individuals who are keenly aware of their own strengths and shortcomings often find ways to either manage or stop around their personal knowledge uh, and the skill gaps are there in contrast cheer leaders figureheads and taskmasters can have major situational and self awareness blind spots are there so, uh, here it is very interesting point is there that is the whether they are you able to manage your personal knowledge and skill and whatever the gaps are there are you able to bridge those gaps. If you are able to bridge those gaps then definitely you will be more successful. They either are unaware of a discount the impact of key situational or follower events they are not aware 
and overestimate their ability to build teams and get results. So, sometimes when the individual is not uh, in fact know the reality, right. So, then he is discounting the impact of the key situational factors and as a result of which uh, their ability to build a team that will get the results are there. Lack of situational and self awareness is there. People wanting to be competent managers get regular feedback on their performance ideally in the form of 360 degree feedback. It is also imperative that is the people in the positions of the authority regularly ask team members for ideas on improving team performance and find ways to stay a bridge of important situational and the follower events are there and therefore, on the basis of those uh, uh, suggestions uh, then the person can uh, find out whether he is the organization fit and he is having the uh, on basis of their self awareness he can meet the situations. Lack of intelligence or skills are there right. So, then in that case also there will be their derailment. Uh, team building know how can be defined as a degree to which a leader knows the steps and processes needed to build high performing teams. So, in the process no, in the process of the team building the leader will knows the steps and the processes right. And uh, uh, the most people spend their careers working in groups, but like a fundamental understanding of what it takes to build cohesive goal oriented teams are there. The subject matter experience can be defined as the relevant knowledge or the experience a person can leverage to solve a problem. And intelligence can be defined as the ability to think clearly, although research has shown that is about the intelligence. People in position of authority are generally brighter than the others, the intelligence of managers varies greatly, right. So, therefore, in that case whether the person is having the debt team building knowledge, it is the matter ex exper expertise and the knowledge experiences a person can leverage to solve a problem and the intelligence is there that is whether the intelligence of a manager varies the greatly. Poor followership is there. Right, uh, the curfew and rolling uh, uh, the followership uh, model states that followers vary on their di two dimensions: critical thinking and engagement. Self starters are followers who uh, seek forgiveness rather than the permission, offer solutions, and make things happen. Brown nosers work hard but are loyal uh, psychophants who never challenge their bosses. These Lakers do all they can do to get out of uh, work. And the criticizers believe their supervise in life is no point to point out all the things their bosses and organizations are the doing wrong. So, if the critical thinking right and is low and the engagement is low they will be slackers. If the critical thinking is low, but the engagement is high they are the brown nosers are there. And the, if the critical thinking is high, but engagement is low data there those are the criticizers are there and critical thinking is high and the engagement is also high they are the self starters are there. Now, finally, we will come to the dark side uh, of the personality trait. Dark side personality traits are the irritating counterproductive behavior tendencies that interface with a leader's ability. Hmm? So, therefore, in that case it is in the what is the practice is irritating and the counterproductive behavior and uh, with the leader's ability to build a cohesive teams and causes followers to exert less effort towards the goal accomplishment is there. Research has identified a total of 11 such dark traits are there that is acceptable. Difficulties building teams because of their dramatic mood swings, emotional outburst and inability to persist on the projects. Skeptical leaders with his dark trait that have an unhealthy mistrust of others always uh, uh, it is a mistrust is there. And therefore, it is challenging what is changing the integrity of their followers and are vigilant for signs of the disloyalty. Because these leaders are so fearful of making the dumb mistakes, they alienate their staff by not making decisions or taking actions on issues. Reserved during times of stress, these leaders become extremely withdrawn and are uncommunicative and unconcerned about the uh, welfare of their staff. Leisurely, and the passive aggressive leaders will exert effort only in the pursuit of their own agenda and will procrastinate on or not follow through with request that are not in line with their agendas are there. They are bold those who are having the narcissistic tendencies these leaders often get quite a bit done 
but their feelings of entitlement, inability to share credit for success tendency to blame their mistakes on other and inability to learn from experience often lead results in trials of the bruised followers are there. Then that is the mischievous tend to quite charming, but take pleasure in seeing if they can get away with the breaking commitments, rules, policies and laws. Colorful, these leaders have a need to be center of attention. Imaginative, these leaders think in eccentric ways, change their minds and make uh, strange or the odd decisions. Diligent, because of their perfectionist tendencies, these leaders frustrate and uh, disempower their staff through the poor prioritization and inability to relate. And dutiful, deal with the stress by showing the in ingratiating behavior to superiors, their legs spines are will unwilling to refuse unrealistic requests, would not stand up for their staff and they burn them out as a result. As usual, uh, these are um, the uh, some uh, uh, readings which are suggested, this is the research paper and this, uh, this is especially is focused on the managerial derailment characteristics and the personality preferences are there. Purpose of examining whether personality preferences and the type from the MBTI are related to the managerial derailment is there. This study is within the context of field research. Uh, it is very interesting to know that is about the how MBTI is uh, affecting uh, the uh, derailment, personality traits are there. Uh, these are judged by the observer perspective and explore, exploratory manner. The MBTI preferences and types are also examined according to the managerial development clusters are there. The MBTI's conceptual foundation and psychometrics may be viewed as a limitation in other personality theories like the big five could be used. And the fact that managers going through a leadership development process may be different to managers in general. And uh, derailment characteristics do not necessarily mean actual managerial derailment. This is also important. That is, uh, sometimes you might have the derailment uh, uh, characteristics, right? But uh, you may not having the managerial derailment. Uh, why? Because the organization fit. If you are, that is, what your traits are fitting with the organization, so there will be no managerial derailment in that organization. A beautiful limitation has been mentioned. Regardless of MBTI type of preference, managers can decrease their chances of managerial derailment through the examination job fit, increasing self awareness and through other mechanism mentioned in the paper. Uh, MBTI preferences type could sig uh, signal whether the managers display derailment characteristics to their co-workers. Right? And the additionally, this paper gives insight into how managers can prevent derailment regardless of their MBTI type and preferences are there. Right? And uh, uh, therefore, and those who want to develop their managerial development, right? So this this uh, study will be very much uh, uh, useful for them. As usual, this is the case study which you can uh, refer and answer the questions as assignment. And uh, this is the um, book uh, Incompetent Manager, right? Uh, and Curse of Managerial Development. So this book you can refer on basis of this, right? This is all about the suggested readings. So, uh, I am sure that is the with this particular session you must have understood that is the how uh, that managerial derailment uh, which causes uh, for the particular individual in the organization. But uh, the one most important point is uh, also uh, to encourage uh, those who are not having those MBTI or personality traits uh, uh, of the derail uh, the successful in that uh, uh, as an individual. But they can be successful manager uh, because of the organization fit as I mentioned. So, therefore, uh, if you are having certain managerial derailment uh, uh, traits, uh, please uh, identify and try to get it uh, uh, the on the track, <laughs> so there is no derailment and develop yourself. Thank you.